Hey guys, what's up? JWisp here, and welcome to episode 7 of the Minecraft 1.17 Survival Let's Play. Here we are, back in the world. We're actually doing pretty good for ourselves. Hello, Moose. I'm just chilling. The village is looking great. We have a lot of village houses, a lot of custom builds, and our villager breeder we made just a couple of episodes ago is starting to pump out a lot of villagers, but not only villagers, also iron golems. <laughs> so that's really good for us. But in the last episode, we did some exploring and I showed you guys pretty much some methods and the best ways to find diamonds in 1.17, since a lot of people have had a lot of issues finding diamonds in 1.17, and Mojang has actually addressed this problem and has started to work on it. So, until we have a uh, better diamond finding, <laughs> we just have to get along with what we can do. But, we have a decent amount of diamonds ourselves, and one thing that goes along with getting diamond armor, tools, weapons, all that stuff, is actually enchanting them. Now, a few episodes ago, we did find an abandoned mine shaft. so what I want to do to start off is show you guys a pretty easy but efficient uh, cave spider spawner farm build that we can use to get XP and drops from the spiders. Plus, I'm not sure we explored that entire mine shaft, so there still might be some more for us to explore down there. Now, these starter farms are really great to make because especially in 1.17, uh, mine shafts are fairly easy to find. And so if you need XP in your survival world, go out there, find a mine shaft, and we're gonna make a cave spider farm. So here we are in the mine shaft. Now, before we get started on the spawner, make sure that you place a lot of torches around the whole area. Not only on the spawner to prevent the actual cave spiders from spawning, but also around the surrounding cave. Just because I don't want any creepers or skeletons, like right over there, sneaking up on me while I'm making this farm. And I also don't want any creepers coming and potentially blowing up some of my work. So, once you have your area kind of mapped out and torches everywhere, here's what we need. We'll need at least two buckets of water because we'll make an infinite water source. Uh, and then the rest of the ingredients you don't really need too many of. Uh, I have four chests, you only need three. Uh, and the chests and the hoppers are optional. I also have three hoppers. This is only if you want to collect the drops from the cave spiders. Drops from cave spiders aren't too great. So if you don't want to collect them, you don't have to. But besides that, we also have some iron trap doors. And the reason we need iron trap doors, as well as slabs, is because we have to create a really tiny gap that the cave spider, we can still hit the cave spider, but the cave spider cannot go through. Because the cave spider can fit through a half a block hole, so we can't just use slabs alone. Besides that, I also have some signs. So, we're gonna collect all of this and get started on the farm. So the first step we have to do here, I'm gonna collect some of my cobblestone to sort of map this out, is we have to make this room four blocks in each direction. So one, two, three, four, and on that fourth block, that's gonna be the last block. Right over here, same thing, one, two, three, four. So then we'll mark out this, and then we have to go in each direction, one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four. So we have this giant room in all, it'll be nine by nine. And what we need to do now is hollow out the entire room. Now another building material I didn't mention uh, that wasn't in the chest is building blocks. You can use any building blocks you want for this. Personally, I'm not gonna bring any of my own building blocks and that's just because I'll get a lot of blocks hollowing out this area. So if you're, you know, early in your game in your world and you don't have a lot of blocks, you don't have to get building blocks, but if you have a lot of stone brick or deep slate maybe, any block that would look nice for a farm, you can use that to sort of replace the walls for this once you're done. But we're gonna dig this out and uh, I'll be back with you guys once we are done. Alrighty, so here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So, once we're done with that, we have, you know, all these sides of the room complete. What we need to do is make sure the spawner has two blocks above it, as well as one, two, three blocks below it. And that will complete the room. And also, just to be safe, let's place one slab on top. Now, while you're hollowing out this room, again, I would recommend having some torches on hand. Uh, just to be safe, you know, place torches everywhere. Whenever you're building a farm, underground, or anywhere where there's low light conditions. Ooh, we got an emerald. Uh, be super careful. So many times I've been making a farm, and then somehow a creeper or a zombie spawns and either kills me or a creeper will blow up and destroy all of my work. So again, like I said, let's, uh, let's block this off really fast. 
We need two blocks above the spawner and again place a slab on top of it. The reason we place the slab on top of the spawner is just so spiders don't spawn on top of the spawner. And then three blocks below it. And I'll be back with you guys once we're finished with this room. Alright, so here we have the room. And what we're gonna do next is grab two water buckets and pick any two corners. It doesn't matter. And just plop down two buckets of water. Now, all this dry area right here, what we want to do is dig down one block. Don't dig down underneath the water or else the water will fall and cover this whole area. But just dig the dry blocks that are not covered by water. Eventually, we will end up breaking these blocks directly under the edge of the water, but that's only once we want the farm to actually start working, and we don't want it to be working yet. So, we're gonna go right in the middle here and dig out these three blocks. And the reason we're doing this is because this is the little pathway that the cave spiders will come into where we will eventually kill them and get the XP and their loot. Now I'm gonna dig this out a little ways. It really doesn't matter how far you dig this because the cave spiders only need a couple blocks to travel, but also right behind where the cave spiders are being killed, you want a little area where you can stand to kill them and also maybe place some chests, a crafting table, and potentially your enchantment table if you wanna do your enchanting right around here. All right, so at this point, we're almost done. I have this little room here and what I'm going to do is one, two blocks from where this ends. On the third block, I'm gonna dig down two blocks and this is where I'm going to put my chests and my hoppers again this is an optional step you don't have to do this if you don't want to collect the drops or if hoppers are a bit too expensive for you if you're really early into your world but we can simply plop our sorry not there plop our chests down right there and then right behind them place our hoppers I'll try to place them so they're each their own individual chest there we go perfect and boom there we go so for this next step, we have some options. I'm just going to place three slabs like this on top of the hoppers. If you want to though, you can replace the middle slab and just put an iron trap door. The reason we would do this is because sometimes if we have slabs here and we will have slabs right above it, the XP orbs can have a little bit of a hard time flowing from place to place and you might not be able to collect it. So this iron trap door simply makes it so that the XP has a higher chance of coming from inside of here to you so you can collect it. So, half a block above your chests, we're gonna place three little slabs just like that with some iron trap doors on top. And then one block behind it and half a block higher, we're gonna place another layer of slabs. So we have a nice little window here that we can hit and kill the cave spiders. And we are also able to collect their drops. Plus, there's a tiny little hole here so that the XP orb can flow through. Now, if you don't have that iron trap door there right at the bottom, you still can get some XP and you might be fine collecting XP. It really just depends. But I recommend placing that trap door there just so you have a little bit of room for the XP orbs to sort of flow out so you can collect it. All right, I placed a layer of blocks above the slabs, so now we can officially go and activate the farm. Now we have to be careful here because again, cave spiders will start spawning, so you wanna be careful about this. What I'm gonna do is first remove the torches from around the room, just like this. Now before I actually remove the torches from off the spawner, I'm gonna dig out these blocks right here, right underneath where I said before where the water's flowing. And boom, as you can see, all points of the water flow towards right here, where we will kill it. So now, we can go, ooh, let's be careful, we already have spiders spawning, and remove all the torches. Perfect. So, we can head inside of here, and ooh, come on, go in there, and we can block this off. Now, it might be a little tricky with the spider there, boom, perfect, we did it, thankfully. So, right here, again, we can kill the spiders, and we can collect their drops, and collect the XP, boom. Perfect. Now, the only other issue you might run into, again, the first issue was with the potential of getting XP with the trapdoor. The other one is sometimes if you get a huge number of cave spiders, like if you want to AFK for a long time and you get tons of cave spiders here, a lot of them will start climbing up that back wall and going to the ceiling. So if that's the case, if you plan on AFKing for a long time and getting cave spiders like that, you might want to, on that top level of the roof closest to us, place a layer of water and underneath it a layer of signs so that the water doesn't flow down. And what that'll do is simply drown the spiders so they don't start all collecting on the ceiling. But, here we go, we have our spider farm completely done. And all you have to do now is really whatever you want. I could leave it like this, or I think what I'm going to do is actually decorate it a bit. Make it look a bit fancier, make it look a bit nicer. I'll probably head back to my main base, grab some blocks, and uh, spruce the place up a bit. Make it look nicer, make it look presentable, and potentially add some other things in here that'll be useful. All right, here we go. I have the room decorated, just added some small decorations, and of course, tons of spiders. 
Only interesting thing is over here the leaves are really green and right here they're a little bit different green but then I realized that when I press F3 this is actually a mountain biome and oh, I didn't mean to do that and this is a plains biome but here we go we have tons of spiders and uh, yeah I can just keep killing them. Now you have a lot of options when it comes to AFKing to kill the spiders. You could either AFK for a long time and then kill the spiders afterwards or what you can do is simply download an auto clicker there's a ton online for free and just set it to click every so often to hit the spiders with your sword and again you'll get tons of xp and boom here we go we're racking up the xp so the next thing we have to do besides xp obviously is we need diamonds we need diamonds so we can actually make things to enchant so i mentioned diamonds and that's because i want to go mining for some diamonds now that we have an xp farm we should be able to hopefully by the next episode get enough diamonds plus uh, enough XP to fully enchant ourselves and get ourselves all set. I like to have some really good enchanted diamond armor before I do much traveling in the nether or the end just to be safe. I mean it's not hardcore so it doesn't matter that much if I play it super safe but I still like to play it relatively safe. So what we're going to do is uh, head out to an area where there's actually a mine shaft that I haven't really explored yet besides one small tiny little part and then I'll be back with you guys. All right, I finally found the entrance to the mine shaft. It took me a little bit. I thought I lost it again, but thankfully we found it. If you're playing on the seed with me, here are the coordinates in case you want them. I always like to sometimes give uh, the coordinates of things I find in the world, just because I know I always leave the seed in the description and some people want to play on the world with me. So here's the location of that. But I'm gonna collect a lot of stuff and I also, besides diamonds, I would also, what's our right level? Okay, I'd also like to collect some amount of copper. I really wanna start doing more builds with copper except I'm not really sure what to do with copper I've, I've tested out a few build designs here and there but I haven't been able to make anything look super amazing with copper I think I just have to give it some time and uh, get used to building with it so if you guys have any suggestions as to what you want to see me do or build in this world uh, specifically if it relates to copper or not let me know down in the comments below because honestly I'm genuinely curious or if you've built something yourself and you think it's cool you could always tag me on Instagram or Twitter and post it stuff like that or go to my discord server post it in the fan art or media channel and I always check those out so yeah either of those work I'm not gonna bother mining the iron because I don't need the iron I have a lot of iron already and I think we're gonna make an iron farm pretty soon but I'll collect the copper a little bit of the gold here and there and mostly diamonds so our Y level is 22, which is a little bit too high for diamonds to spawn. However, this is, I think, the top layer of the mine shaft. So that means there should be another layer of the mine shaft below us, which will lead to a lower Y level and potentially some diamond spawns. It could also potentially lead to some other caves where we might find some diamonds. And honestly, with so many people having trouble finding diamonds in 1.17, it seems like still the best method for me is caving. Either finding big caves and just exploring them, or using my subtitles to find caves that way. Subtitles are always the best mining method. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I would check out episode 6, the last episode of this series I uploaded. But, let's look around here and see- ooh, see this is what I'm talking about. One of these lower caves could potentially have some good diamond spawns for us. What's our copper looking like? Okay, we have over a stack already. That's pretty insane. Let's see, any diamonds down here? Hopefully. I do have myself a water bucket, just to be safe. And... I don't see any diamonds down. I don't think diamond spawns are necessarily more rare. I just think a lot of them get covered up because there's a lot more things that spawn now. We have things like deep slate and tough and geodes and all other kinds of crazy blocks, plus copper. So it makes it kind of hard to just find diamond when there's more ores to shuffle through. I guess there's no diamonds down here, but let's head back to the mine shaft and check. Now besides actually mining for diamonds, we could still potentially get some more diamonds another way. We could potentially find diamonds in some of these mine shaft chests. So if there's diamonds down in there, that could also be a good way of getting diamonds. So if we find any chests, which uh, hopefully we do sometime- Oh! Hey! <laughs> there we go. Hopefully we do sometime pretty soon. We have the potential to find diamonds. No diamonds, but we did get some more glow berries, which is pretty cool. I don't need them because we already have a glow berry farm set up. But glow berries are one of the new blocks in 1.17, so pretty cool that we got them. They're not that useful, and they really don't do anything too crazy. But I think this, you know, I still think they're pretty. Plus, they're a new block, so I want to experiment with them and play around with them more just to see what I can do with them. Uh, Alright, I think I'm going to just keep looking around here and see if I find anything worth mentioning. I've been looking around for a while and I haven't actually found too much, so maybe this mineshaft is just unlucky, but 
This next part is a bit lower. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't even see that there was a creeper there. Uh, oh, I see diamonds. <laughs> what is happening? Uh, yeah, this is a lower part of the mine shaft. So I was going to say the lower Y level might mean some diamond spawns. So let's see. We got one. Okay, two, three, four, five. Any more or just five? I mean, if it's only five, I'll still take it. That's pretty good. Okay, we got five diamonds. So that's a start. That's better than nothing. Even if we only leave with five, I'm still fine with that. I'm probably going to do a lot more live streams in this world starting soon, doing some mining. But I also have to keep continuing to work on my hardcore series. I took a small little break, but I have to get back to that. So I'm going to probably have to work on streaming both worlds. So it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to sort of manage time between the both of them. But I think we can do it. Okay, please give me some more chests. <laughs> I haven't found any chests in a while. I just want a few more. Let's... Let's see if hopefully we can find some. Let's head over here. Any chests? Please? We've only found one chest so far. I'm fine with diamonds or potentially even name tags. Because I don't think I have any name tags. We have one for our Oxalotl, James Pond. And one for our dog, Moose. And besides that, we have no more name tags. So we're pretty much out. And I think that's it for this bottom section. So, I don't know. I think that might be it for this mine shaft. Alright, finally we found ourselves another chest. Let's see. Uh, okay, well, nothing crazy, but I'll take the golden apple and hey, 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 get out of here. Oh, we have an emerald too. Okay, nice. Unfortunately, I still don't have fortune. On oh, whoa, whoa, here we go. I don't have fortune on this pickaxe yet, but I'm sure we'll get it soon. I've checked out most of this mine shaft. Oh, there's another emerald up there. What is going? Okay, I mean, I'll take him. I won't be mad. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I see all these ores. I'll skip them for now. Uh, yeah, this might lead to the other part of the mine shaft. I think that I've already seen. Oh, there's another spider spawner. I don't know if there's too much more. I'm sure there's more chests down here that I just haven't seen. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, nothing else really worth noting in that mineshaft. <laughs> nothing crazy. But we still got some pretty good drops. We got some more glow berries. Plus, we got some more copper. And it's always nice just to have more copper. I think I'll throw it in my furnace for now just to smelt a little bit. And boom, there we go. Of course, we have some diamonds, which is pretty nice. We got an ender pearl too. And some emeralds, which is awesome. With the emeralds, I'll probably start some sort of villager trading hall or trading system sometime soon. Because since the next couple of episodes, we're going to work on enchanting to get fully enchanted diamond armor and tools. We should also probably work on getting some netherite books. Now, we have tons of villagers, so I don't think it's going to be a problem getting the mending villager. We just need a lectern, and we just need to keep placing it a bunch of times. But the emeralds might be a little bit more tricky. The best way to get emeralds for us might be to trade paper for emeralds with a villager. And the best way we can do that is maybe to make ourselves an automatic sugarcane farm. Or just to get a ton of sugarcane by harvesting it manually. So, whichever option we choose, I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to figure out. But I'm sure either option will be good. But anyways, guys, that is all for today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed, found it useful, educational, inspirational, anything like that. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you could sort of, you know, get some inspiration for your own worlds. But that's all for this episode. If you have any suggestions as to what you want to see me do in the future, seriously, let me know down below in the comments. I really want to make this survival let's play great. And I want to try some things that I haven't tried before, but I'll need input and information from you guys as to what I should do. But like I said, that's all for this one. My name is Jay Wisp, and I will see you guys all in the next episode.